Hey guys, welcome back. On this episode, we're gonna dive a little bit into chain plate replacement options and finally get Papillon hauled out of the water and get to look at her bottom for the first time for us and for her in seven years. So grab a drink and let's do it. So I'm thinking, Hey Sue, not a bad idea. I love that so much. I don't disagree with you. He's already, well, he's already mentioned uh, this. Okay, I, I thought you just walked up and be like, well, nope. That. So, a normal <laughs> Sorry. external would probably cursing. run God. down to about Give me like a this. camera cursing. But I was thinking of like what catamarans do, where they just put a big blob. And so... A big blob. Big blob big of metal. blob of tick. Instead of a long skinny one, just make a big square thing and it'd be like bolt, 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 bolt. Well, that one's got a long skinny one. That's what she said. <laughs> No, that one's really short. That? Our versions of blob and long and skinny are different. I mean, yeah. that's kind of like, well, like kind of short. That's very short. But why not just replace them the way they're made? Because these, these aren't glassed in, are they? Yes, I mean, they are. They go through the glass, but you're saying they're glassed in on the inside? Oh, yeah. They go down to here. Oh. They've got T-bars. There's two T's. Oh. So and where do you have to cut the glass out? Uh, you have to pull, uh, if you, so those inside, this goes down and it has a T that goes across and continues going down. It has another T and that sits flat against the hole. And then they put about a, this much fiberglass, which is about this thick over top of it. And so, so you, you have, have to, to cut the fiberglass. You have to take all the cabinetry out. Which okay. is a bitch. Yeah. Would it be really nice when it was done? Yeah. It would look just the way it is. But would it be structurally really nice? Uh, for another 30 years. Sounds pretty good. Uh, and the way to do it ideally is you replace what's there with titanium. Okay. Uh, which we all know how incredibly cheap that material is. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a little overboard to go with. Uh, no, that's what almost everyone with these boats is doing. That replaces so, it internally. I will say this. Depending on what your long-term view of this boat is, this is an ocean cruising boat for you do it the right way even if it takes longer than you expect well the fun thing is external uh, is something other people are doing as well okay it makes right. maintaining it a lot easier uh, if it's fine to do that and it's structurally as strong I mean, there's plenty of boats that have them already external it okay what do you and thinking? one of the things which i think is beneficial to us is where the chain plates sit presently we've got incredibly thick glass mm -hmm. so it would make this sit better yeah i just way lighting on you is just stunning <laughs> i really it is and uh i didn't really want to cut through this rub rail it was one of the, the parts that made me less excited about um doing external but i was thinking if we can get away from having to uh cut through the rub rail i'd be much happier with the aesthetics of an external is we can make this part all run pretty flush with an, a little bit extra teak I think maybe this should go to a Slocum uh, owner website. Yeah. Oh, she's waving. I, I would like. <laughs> little stingray waving. It's so cool. Isn't that cute? <laughs> can't zoom in, can't even see him, but. Oh, it's He was there. Okay. So, um, and looking at this, all this stuff works pretty easily because we need, oh, these pins will be fun. That's another fun thing, is uh, the height of this, we might end up having to cut all this cable. And ruin this lovely work that... Uh... Well, what we'd end up doing is we just, uh, these stay locks are removable. So we just assemble it and we'd raise this about an inch so that uh, these pens, when we put them in, aren't so difficult, so the pins would sit at this level. Hmm. Uh, this is part of why I really wanted to do the chain plates before he did the standing rigging, is I mm -hmm. knew the likelihood of me being able to make all this work perfectly without changing things was going to be hard. Uh, but it makes this one really difficult too. So maybe we should just do it the way it was originally done? Which uh, means we have to pull everything out of the boat and we have mm -hmm. to fly home with all these parts. When? Uh, probably our third time out here. Okay. So this is number one. Mm -hmm. uh, next one, 
maybe we'll we'll start disassembling the interior of the boat mm. and uh, getting hardware ready to take out. Uh, because I believe next time if we can take all the headliners down and to get all the hatches sealed, mm. uh, that would be a good project for next time. And then the following trip, we grind out. I need to get the cabinetry out and grind out all the uh, chain plates. Mm. And then take them home. That sounds like a lot of work. Uh, when did you think this was going to be a little bit of work? Not a little bit, but that's a lot of work. Uh, we were already going to take all the headliners down and redo the hardware. Yes. How's the light on me? Is it good? Oh, you look incredible. <laughs> you do too. It's that Mexico light. Yeah. So pretty. Gives you a golden glow. Uh, so nice. All right, so uh, how excited are you about grinding um, fiberglass? The trip three, maybe I'll be more excited about that. Uh, so the two, yeah, three and then trip four, we'll probably come back with the car. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Right. Oh, look, look, another one. Okay, what are you guys doing? Making dinner. Making dinner. What's for dinner? Uh, we're going to have That's fresh pico de gallo with refried beans and this chicken, which I'm going to shred up and make extra spicy. Uh, extra our assumption spicy? is Ashley, if she has enough spiciness, she won't realize that her tooth maybe hurts. Spicy is not good. Uh, we're going to we're putting spicy with the already spicy, and then some spicy. And then some extra spicy. <laughs> yeah. And then the. Do you want more onions than that? I feel like that's a lot of onion. Uh, well, uh, cut up the tomato and see how much. Okay. Well, let me get this part. Is this our last dinner on board? It is our last dinner on board until we come back. I, I'm kind of sad. It's, uh, I'm know, already planning our return trip. I don't know when I'll eat dinner on this boat again. That's sad. Oh, well, you might come out next time. You might come out for a work week? Eh, maybe. Make sure your Spanish is better, see? So oh my make... gosh. Let me tell you. I'm at the most bonita mujeres. Oh, mujera. Uh, you, you have to tell your story. So I was out in the cockpit playing guitar. Minding my own business. It's a beautiful night. All of a sudden, this beautiful woman walks up. She stands there and says, hola. And I was like, hola. Como estas? Muy bien. Y tú? Muy bien, yes. And I said, uh, let her know up front, you know. Espanol, un poquito, solamente. And she said, oh, okay. Well, uh, you know, de donde eres? I don't know where I was from. I said, uh, uh, Texas. Y tú? She said, uh, Cubano. I was like, she said, so Cubano. I said, oh, Cubano. She said, si. I said, oh. We got to talking a little bit, the best Spanish I could do. And I said, uh, Esta noche, es una noche uh, bon muy bonita, no? She said, ah, sí. And I said, tú eres muy bonita también. She said, oh. <laughs> Anyways, we got chatting. Totally hit on a girl in Spanish. It's the greatest moment of my life. Mm. Also, I felt like I got hit on too. It was wonderful. Uh, Jake was supposed to invite her onto the boat to have but, have dinner with us. However. However. <laughs> however. I did not know how in Spanish. <laughs> so I have a very specific mission to go home and learn much more Spanish. I need to be fluent very soon so I can come back and find uh, una novia español. What were you just saying, Jake, about the cooking on a boat? I like cooking on the boat. It's very communal. It's like yeah. camping or barbecuing or, you know, it just brings people together. It's really mm. nice. I can't wait to have Jason on the boat. It is a lovely galley to work in. Plus, we've got the nice big barbecue outside, so uh, it makes free cooking here and outside. We just need a, like, an induction stove that we can hook up on the rail outside, so we'd have, like, three places to cook all at once. So that would be nice. Yeah. You're doing garlic there. Indeed. Doing a good job. Thank you. It is a good galley. You want to try? Sure. No longer in that slip. 
Bye bye. Where are we off to, Trav? We are off to get pulled, and we get the excitement of what's under this boat because we have no idea, absolutely none, other than what we did uh, snorkeling. But super exciting to see what this boat looks like out of the water. And what's uh, on the foredeck now? Uh, there's a re just recertified um, life raft, which uh, we may be buying, but if nothing else, we're storing it for uh, this beautiful oyster right over there because uh, it uh, was in the wrong color for them. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we have a Force 10 4 burner stove that we're going to compare to our Force 10 3 burner stove. Who knows? We'll see. Huh. And uh, then we've got tarp somewhere around here that's going to go over top of everything. We're going to take all this down. Ah, they are there. So I'm going to just keep going slow. Uh, Travis, you said you wanted two bow lines. Right? Yeah. Two bow lines up. Do you want two on the nope. port side? Uh, just one port, one starboard. Okay, that's already up there. All right, I couldn't remember what we had. Yeah, no, no problem. I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Which way does our stern swing? I don't know. Starboard. Oh, starboard. and also, can someone pull off a, uh, a roving fender, please? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, well, this is a first. How are you feeling, Stephen? Good, ready. Ready, ready for this boat to be uh, finally ready to get her out and this one. see what it looks on like. Top of Chula. The restaurant looks cooler from the thing. Yeah, it does. Two good ones. Uh, I, one of them, I think, is going to. Well, Mo, I see your, I see your point. You mean pulling into that slip? Hey. Stop. Stop. Oh, they got to get the slings in the water first. Yeah. <coughs> so we're just hanging out. I saw the other boat went stern out. Did they did. Sounds about right. Hmm. Sounds very much about right. <laughs> Uh, the guys are putting the straps in the water now, and we are anxiously hanging out, just waiting to get pulled out. Just do it where you bow in. I'll get oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I don't. It has to do with the mass. I don't think they're. Well, they can turn the machine around. I don't think their um, their slip is deep enough. It's part of the problem. Ah, you might be right. For what? To go bow in. Yeah, if you bow in, you may your like bow spurt or whatever may be like hitting uh -oh, the end of before the they slip. Can... Catch before it. you can get yeah far enough down although they do have like another 10 feet they could travel out nervous about this oh no i'm excited i'm very very excited super super excited ready you're not nervous about your boat being nope. yanked up what if they ready drop to, it ready to see you see how clean it is what if they too? drop it huh what if they drop it no they won't i'll have it in video got it got it see Yes. Yep. Your voice echoes. I know. Loud mouth, big mouth guy. That's right. <laughs> I'm excited. Great. Okay. Apparently the dog is as well. The other guy had no problem doing it. Well, the other guy had a more modern bottom. True. A lot more easy to maneuver. Plus he's got a bit of a wind on this one yeah it's probably helping right now yeah actually it is i think and then his prop walk is going to shoot the stern to the starboard side so hopefully yeah, he'll be able to mm -hmm. drift into it
So Travis, why did it take you three attempts to back up Papillon? Was there something special going on here? So prop walk was not my friend when I was backing up. Uh, I had to point almost straight to the rocks and it made me really nervous. But the boat, as I'd back up, would turn and on this third try, it perfectly went into our slip. So here we are, about to pull Papillon out of the water for the first time since purchasing her in Liberia, Costa Rica. And right now, we're in Marina Chiapas in Tapachula, Mexico. You might be asking why we didn't pull her out of the water in Costa Rica. Well, surprising to us and most people, there were no nearby facilities to do so. So that just kind of led us to buying the boat um, sight unseen for her bottom, other than diving below. And from what we saw, she needs some work. And this was a great place to do it and a good opportunity to get some major projects done. So here we go. At this point, we were all really stoked to see what Papillon's bottom side actually looked like. It had been seven years since she's been pulled out of the water, um, although the previous owner did have her hull cleaned um, quite regularly. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, Travis can explain more about that. What are you thinking? Uh, a few blisters did make me unhappy, but fortunately there's only a couple of them the size of that one on the rudder. Uh, we're going to have a uh, bit of work to do, for sure. Uh, it'd be nice if we had a couple days where we could break all these open so they could dry out while we're gone, but I guess that's what uh, we'll be doing next time. Yay! Blister popping. Doesn't everyone love a blister popping video? Uh. <laughs> So yeah, that one right there is big, and there's a couple others. A lot of them, I'm, I need to take a knife to them, but I, I'm optimistic that the same thing I have. The younger tumble? Yeah. It's a uh, very... That one, that one's big. Yeah. But once again, let's... This metal. This metal? Is... Yeah. Why would it be metal? I think it might be stainless steel. I think the whole thing's steel. Huh. I have no idea what we're going to get to. But that... That feels... That looks like stainless steel. No pitting on the prop. Nothing significant. So that's good. Bed tip though. Even it feels pretty solid. A little bit of wobble, but I don't know what's allowed. So, uh, I'd like to have a scraper right now. I think I'll go up in the boat and grab one and play around for a few minutes. We need a ladder. That too. We need a ladder. That's an interesting question. Do they provide ladders or do we have to bring them around? Uh. Uh. Well, we are getting ready to leave her for a, about a month. Travis is tying up the tarp, finishing up. And uh, yeah, just looking at so many blisters. They are everywhere. Oof. Let's see if he popped the really big one. Oh, she looks from here. So big. Hi, feeling. 
Oh, like I want to stay longer and get more done. Hmm. But nothing terrible below the water line, which is good. Uh, I think uh, if we just get the uh, barrier cut uh, uh, taken off, we'll be good. Maybe a few little spots where we've got blister work that we have to do, but uh, the old paint was coming off in nice little ribbons. It's having so much fun. Yeah, I see that. I mean, this it, rudder is really dripping a lot still. Uh, slightly worrisome. Yeah, there might be water on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. We are in the back of a pickup truck. Um, this is, feels kind of like a Mexico out of an old Western, honestly. So this is great. Um, we both being gone. Had some ideas. Uh, yeah, right. No. No. Nope. Not easily. Yes. So uh, we couldn't couldn't get a ride. The way we intended. Here she goes. This is legal. But very nice gentleman, the manager of the marina, offered to drive us into town mm, with all of our stuff. Nemo. And then Nemo. we're gonna get taxis from town to our Airbnb. Mm. We'll figure that out when we get there. But mm -hmm. uh this is nice, it's nice out. The evenings here are quite lovely, frankly. Saying goodbye to the marina for now. All right, guys, make sure you don't miss our next episode. A great friend of ours, Jason, flies out with us. We all get to hike up this beautiful, largest volcano of all of Central America. And, oh, yeah, we begin the demolition of Papillon's internal chain plates. It is a very, very messy job, but we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. By a Taiwanese boat, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't be a stranger. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers!